What's the word, y'all? Hey, y'all know I absolutely love my job. And it's not just because I get to talk about basketball for a living, but it's because I have an archive of pretty much every NBA opinion I've had for the past three seasons somewhere out on the internet. And every once in a while, I like to go back and watch old videos of mine and just laugh at myself because I am very far from the perfect guy when it comes to talking about basketball. There's nobody out there that is shooting 100% on takes. So I like to go back and listen to my old takes and think, you wild for that, my boy. Because I learned from a very young age, when you talk about something that doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, and that's what sports is to me, it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, being wrong is okay. I am not a dude that will die on the NBA opinion because everything is fluent and everything is changing. I have a lot of things that I've said that I've been wrong about. Um, like last year, there's a period of time where the, the Milwaukee Bucks were struggling to close out games, and I came onto this channel, and one of my recaps was like, yeah, this is why I don't believe that they're, they can win a championship this season. They did that. <laughs> they did that. There's portions of my podcast. We first started where, candidly, I was like saying, I was picking a random player on the Toronto Raptors, and I said something like, Pascal Siakam, he'll never be an all-star. And two seasons later, he was an all-star. Those, those moments are funny to me, y'all. Bad takes or takes that miss are funny. So today's video, we're going to be looking at some other people's takes that didn't, didn't live up to the hype and just enjoy ourselves. Let me know in the comment section something that you thought might have happened in the NBA or you completely wrong about that you can look back and laugh at yourself because that's what this is about. At the end of the day, I just want to remind y'all to just enjoy basketball. So we are on Reddit with it. Uh, Drakey504 said, what is your worst take in the past three to five years and why? For me, I was adamant on taking AD over Giannis. I like players who can shoot. So while they both are dominant, I liked how AD can space the floor more than Giannis did. I'm a clown. And this is great because, again, he's laughing at his bad take. And you know what? This wasn't that crazy of an opinion to have three to three so years ago um, because Anthony Davis was on the path to be the best player in the NBA or one of the top five players in the NBA. He stopped. He has not got much better. While Giannis has continuously got better. So he was wrong here. But in the moment, having this opinion three to five years ago wasn't that crazy. It just didn't age well. Number one post, LaMelo would be a bust. And though I didn't think LaMelo was going to be a bust, I didn't really understand the hype. Now, I got to interview LaMelo Ball when he was in the JBA. When it was him, LaVar, LiAngelo. We interviewed them. And at that point, LaMelo Ball was like 6'3 because he was standing next to Pierre and they were the same height. He was like 6'3. And that was the only time I really watched LaMelo Ball play because at the age of 25, or I guess I wasn't 25 then, when he was playing in high school, I was out of the age of like social media watching high schoolers play. So I knew what Chino Hills was. I had knew that he had existed, but I never watched him in high school. And when he was playing overseas, I never watched or kept up with him. I'm a guy that, that tunes into NBA basketball almost exclusively. So while majority of people already had this opinion about LaMelo, whether you thought he was going to be a bust or whether you thought he was going to be the next coming of Jesus Christ, I was somewhere in the middle because I had no idea. And here he is you know, might be an all-star this season. You can make the argument. I was extremely hesitant with the CP3 trade. Didn't want to sacrifice years of contention down the line for one to two years of a low playoff seed. I'm an idiot loser. And he is a, he has a Suns flair, so he is a Suns, flair, uh, Suns fan. I'm happy I'm reading this because I am on record on this channel or on my podcast. I was in the same boat. I'm not a Suns fan, but I'm a Chris Paul fan. For a long time, there was a Chris Paul jersey hanging up here, and then it failed when I was I was in a job interview, and it fell in the middle of the interview. Um, and when Chris Paul got traded, I was like, man, I'm I was mad because in my mind, I wanted to see Chris Paul get traded to a contender. And and in that moment, the Suns, I had no idea what was about to come. In my mind, the Suns. We're so far away from being a contender. I thought the same thing he thought. There's like, hey, they might be a seven seed. They might be a six seed. Never in a million years would I expected them to be a team that was literally in the championship and this season potentially competing for another one. So I was in the wrong there with you, Mr. Pistol Pete. Back when EG was still around, I remember him saying something like, Jokic is going to be at least as good as Cat. And I was thinking, there's no way they end up on the same level of player where it turns out that it isn't close, just not in the... Who, who are we referring to as EG? Not Eric Gordon. Who is there EG I don't know about? Oh, a Redditor who predicted Jokic will be the MVP when nobody else thought so. Now he's saying similar things about Isaiah Hardenstein. Buy up the Isaiah Hardenstein stock, ladies and gentlemen, because Mr. Redditor who predicted Jokic <laughs> is now saying things about Isaiah Hardenstein. Yo. But I guess he said the same thing about Poku and Jonah Bolden. So 
I mean, he's not a prophet, but he he's shooting a decent percentage because I even brought this up on my podcast like a week ago where I don't even remember Jokic's rookie season. Which tells me that in my mind, there is no way Jokic is going to turn into the best center in the league or an MVP player, you know? So the fact that this guy, random Reddit or EG, said that they were, he was going to be on the same level as Cat, it's kind of wild. That's kind of wild, man. It's, that's... I need to find Mr. EG. What is his... I, w- I would love to go through his archive of predictions. But I want to make a prediction like that, y'all. I want to make a a Super Bowl prediction that ends up being right. And then that's the only thing we talk about ever again. If, if, okay, give me some time. I need to... Who is in this draft class is this year's Jokic? <laughs> this year's Jokic. That guy does not... That, that doesn't happen every year. This year's Jokic. Why would LeBron go to the Lakers? I thought... Well, he's in the mid-30s and presumably wants to win as many championships as he can before retiring. Why would he go to a team that's nowhere near ready? I've been wrong about every LeBron free agency decision he's made. This is what this is the thing about LeBron James' free agency decisions or every decision he's made. He's always been able to look at a team and be like, okay, they got this piece, this piece, and this piece, and we can trade this piece to get this player. So when he went back to the Cleveland Cavaliers, he knew that they, well, he didn't know that they were going to get Wiggins, but he knew that they were about to have a high lottery pick. He knew that they had uh, Kyrie Irving there, who was a young player that was amazing already. He knew that they had pieces to potentially make trades to make them better. Boom, he's going back home. And now Andrew Wiggins, who's the first overall pick, is going to the Minnesota Timberwolves, and Kevin Love is coming back. When he saw the Lakers, a lot of it, uh, uh, you remember, I remember when he signed, a lot of people was like, oh, LeBron is giving up on basketball because he's going to LA because he wants to make movies, he wants to be in commercials, he wants to do endorsement stuff, he's not looking to win basketball. But in reality, yeah, he still wanted to make movies and do all that other stuff, but he saw that there was Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, he saw these young dudes there that he was like, I'm going to give them a year. I'm not going to tell the Lakers to destroy this team just yet, but best believe if they don't come to play in this first season, we have all the pieces to get a guy and that guy ended up being Anthony Davis. Was that some colluding under the table, tampering? Probably. But he saw a guy in Anthony Davis who wanted to be out. And Anthony Davis was like, I will only go to L.A. to sign an extension. So LeBron has um, figured out a way. And right now, I know the Lakers aren't good because they made some even more trades. And these trades don't look as good as the Anthony Davis trade. But at the end of the day, if LeBron James retires and he only won one with the Lakers, that's successful to me. There's so many people out there that don't end up getting four or don't even get end up getting one. Um, so... LeBron has figured out a way, man. I thought Dennis Smith Jr. would be a perennial all-star. I, I thought he was very good, too. And and now that there have been reports coming out for, the, like, the last couple weeks about how he was treated once Luka got there, maybe derailed his career a little bit. But he also could have been a dude that was just putting up good stats on a team that was really bad his first year with the Dallas Mavericks. Could be either way. Um, but now he's, like, a journeyman. And it's just kind of sad what happened to Dennis Smith Jr. Another thing about CP3 saying that he wouldn't make an all-star team after 2018-2019 season through the injuries and his age. Yikes. The vegan diet returned to a full-time point guard duties and all of that stuff. Age like fine wine. Uh, for sure, I love to see that so many people were, were wrong about Chris Paul because this was kind of a consensus about CP3. They're not saying that he was washed, but a lot of people thought that his career was starting to decline um, and that, again, he wouldn't be an all-star again and he was an all-star last year. He's going to be an all-star this year. I'm pretty sure he was an all-star the year before that when he was with OKC. So he was able to completely turn his career around after the time with the Rockets. Ooh. Jimmy Butler trade for Zach in the seventh pick was a bust. Zach will not recover from his injury, and we just lost our best player. One that I could talk about because I was there in the moment. And you know what, Mr. Benjamin9292? I was similar to you in this trade. Um, Actually, on my Reddit account, from the day that this trade happened, I was sitting at home in my fire guard pack shirt. We knew that Jimmy Butler was getting traded. We just didn't know what the package was. And when it ended up being that, I was very skeptical. Um, because Zach Levine had just tore his ACL. And, and that was right around the time that me and my guy started our podcast. And Zach Levine was up for an extension. And we were talking about him and restricted free agency. Remember, Zach Levine came back to play, but he only played like half a season, if I'm not mistaken, with the Bulls. And he looked decent. But we were trying to figure out, and as a podcast, what would be a number in restricted free agency that would be too much and the Bulls shouldn't match? And I think I went on that podcast and said, if if somebody offers him $25 million, we shouldn't match. Thank God I was wrong. I think he got offered 20 from the Sacramento Kings and we matched that. But if we would have let Zach Levine walk and he turned into the the star player that we got today, I would have been mad at myself. So that is a moment where I was completely wrong. But I think... I think that I wasn't crazy in that opinion because at that point, 
he has showed flashes of him being an elite level scorer, but he was known as a dunker around the league and he was coming off an ACL injury. So I didn't think he was going to be as electric. And I was wrong. Shout out to Zach Levine. And now, um, give him give him the Supermax. Anything less than that is a disappointment, front office. He actually got a lot of different opinions about the Bulls. He said he thought Lonzo was a bust, and now he's on the Bulls, and he's good. Alex Caruso was a meme and only got recognized because of LeBron. I think a lot of people thought this, and now that he's in Chicago playing better, a lot of the Lakers fans are like, man, he been doing that, which is true. Um, Car Caruso was good before he got to the Bulls, 100%, but um, just more opportunity with the Bulls has just made it a little bit better. That's all. That's all. Car Alex Caruso was not an all-defensive caliber player or all-defensive caliber buzz player with the Lakers. He might have been having that type of defensive impact. It's hard, it's hard to explain what I'm trying to think. Oh, man. Oh, look. Clay is going to shoot the free throws. He must be okay. Oh, man. There was another Reddit post that was on the front page this morning about the amount of money Clay Thompson has made since his injury, and it's kind of crazy. So before his injury, Clay Thompson had earned $78.8 million in his career. Since his injury, he's made $84 million. He's made more money while being injured than playing. That's insane, Clay. Go get your bag. Go get another broke. Can't wait to see Clay Thompson back. But yeah, I didn't I didn't think this because I saw Kobe, right? I saw Kobe shoot his free throws and then get pulled out of the game. So I didn't think he was going to be okay. But I also didn't think um, that was going to be the first injury that was going to mo move him out of the NBA for two years. It's still early, but I lost my mind when the Raps took Scotty. Um, little did I know how talented it was. I think a, maybe a lot of people didn't lose their mind. Um, but a lot of people thought that Jalen Suggs was going to go number four because y'all needed a, a guard then. Um, and I, I was doing my draft, my yearly draft, uh, stream of the draft. And a lot of people were saying that that wasn't a bad pick. So I trusted my chat and my chat ended up being right because Scotty Barnes is super, super talented. Yeah. I genuinely thought the Kings would turn a corner after one decent season they had three years ago. I thought Fox was emerging as a star and they were going to burst into the playoffs next season. Then they fired the coach. They got them there. I hired Luke Walton. Out of all people, Fox never got better. Rest of the team regressed and they still suck. Kings basketball is hell. I am 100% in this boat. Dave Yeager had them boys hooping and they were they were the 10th seed that season. And if they were the 10th seed now, they would have been in the play, the play in and that was a success. They were running, they was playing great, and then uh, Luke Walton came in and they went from one of the top five paces in the NBA to one of the bottom five paces in the NBA and everything has been bad since then. Fred Van will never be a true point guard and can't run an offense. Um, that is, that is not the case because he's been really good this season. So yeah, that was a bad take. I was convinced Ben Simmons was going to develop some kind of shot even if it was just a small mid-range. Here's my prediction. And we're going to end the video off right here. Ben Simmons will develop some sort of a shot. Ben Simmons will not be a three-point shooter, but he will develop something that makes him somewhat of a threat late in games. I am still a believer in Ben Simmons, though he has not played in all what seems like almost a year. And he's been sitting at home denying checks. I still am a believer of Ben Simmons and him progressing as an NBA player. So that, you remember how I said I wanted to make a bold prediction that was similar to Jokic to be a star? Is that a bold prediction? I don't really think that's that bold. Um, but let me know in the comment section what your worst or weakest take has been over the last three to five years. And we will review them and laugh. Because that's what we do. Enjoy basketball, y'all.